Good day to you! In today's video, we will be looking at the first cartoon appearance of that lovable, huggable creature from Dimension X, Krang! So, alright, let's go! Yeah! So, we start off with April O'Neil and the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. You know, Michelangelo, Donatello, Leonardo, and Raphael. They are walking around the sewers of New York, looking for a giant subterranean base called the Technodrome. They found it in the previous episode, and now they kind of want to study it more. But... The Technodrome is missing! It was left right here! This isn't a set of keys or something, right? Like, it's a freaking giant building underneath the city! Where the hell could it go? Well, it turns out, it's on the move! The turtle's arch nemesis, the Shredder, well, he's going completely road rage! He's driving and tunneling this Technodrome underneath New York City, which, you know, realistically should cause earthquake-like conditions in the city itself. And because he's driving so close to the surface, it should create a whole bunch of sinkholes throughout the city. But no! Science be damned! Shredder is pissed off because the previous night, he and his Foot Clan soldiers got their asses completely handed to them by these Ninja Turtles. But luckily, Shredder gets some turtle-destroying advice from his business partner, Krang. And he tells Shredder to- Oh my god, what the hell is that thing? Is that a brain? Holy crap! Can you imagine having that in your head? Jeez! Anywho, this horrible looking Krang suggests to Shredder that he fights mutated animals with mutated animals. You know, make your own mutants. And if that plan doesn't somehow work, hey man, at least you have a whole bunch of merchandising opportunities, you know? So it's a win-win. So Shredder gets robots to steal a rhinoceros and a warthog from the Central Park Zoo. And Shredder gets two of his, like, absolutely dumbest lackeys to volunteer for a mutant upgrade. Holy jeez, hey, like all this technology, all this mutation power, and you find the two dumbest people to be part of the program. I'm sure nothing will go wrong with this. <laughs> Meanwhile, the turtle sensei, Master Splinter, joins the search for this missing massive technodrome. During the search process, Splinter separates from the Ninja Turtles and he finds the technodrome. But unfortunately, he is instantly kidnapped. Dude is screwed, right? Like he's totally on his own. But eventually, the turtles fall through that animal stealing hole from the Central Park Zoo and they find the technodrome sitting like right Freaking there! Like literally, right there! If you look down that hole, there's the Technodrome! Nobody calls the police, nobody calls the army. You only have one reporter going out there to cover the story of two animals being kidnapped, but nothing about a massive base under the city and a giant crater underneath the surface. Okay, sounds good. Knowing that Splinter is inside the Technodrome, the Ninja Turtles have no choice but to go inside this obvious trap to save their master. Which, you know, usually would sound pretty Pretty deadly, but um, in this case, not so much. The turtles are put in multiple impressive looking but easily escapable traps. They also get attacked by highly advanced robotic weapons, you know, but destroy those like they're made out of paper mache. Easy breezy, right? Eventually, the turtles make it deeper into the base and they find Master Splinter, who is hanging like obvious bait in the middle of a giant room. Blot! Turns out, it's a trap! Shredder and a handful of his foot soldiers confront the turtles. Also, Shredder gives us a quick little history lesson of where the turtles came from and how he fits into that whole thing. Shredder's real name is Oroku Saki, and many moons ago, he forced his rival, Hamato Yoshi, out of Japan, where he fled to the sewers of New York City. But one fateful day, Shredder got some mutagen into Saki's lair, which got on the turtles and which got on Yoshi, so they all mutated into the lovable crime-fighting force we know today. The reason Shredder told the turtles that story was basically him saying, I am your father. Join me and we can rule the galaxy together. You know, basically to that effect. But after the turtles searched their feelings, they rejected Shredder's proposition. Which means 
The fight is on! So Shredder introduces his new and improved lackeys. You know, those two idiot volunteers and those two zoo animals that were kidnapped from earlier? They are mutated together and have become the two horrible foes, Rocksteady and Bebop. And now the epic battle is underway. But uh, man, turns out it's not really epic. So Rocksteady and Bebop knock each other out, you know, pretty instantly. And Shredder only brought like four foot soldiers to this fight, you know, which seems like the dumbest plan ever. Because, you know, this is the headquarters of the Foot Clan. There should be hundreds of foot soldiers. Even if they're not that good at fighting, the sheer numbers of them, man, they should overtake the turtles. But no. So the turtles, yet again, kick everyone's butt and they save Splinter and take off to the city's surface. So the day is set. Oh, wait a second. Bebop and Rocksteady have returned with freaking laser guns. And it looks like the turtles are totally screwed. Oh, oh, wait a second. Rocksteady and Bebop are total idiots. They are easily defeated and put in a cage in the zoo. Damn, and I was looking for a good fight. Oh, well, maybe next episode. But I guess that's pretty much it for now. But with that, that is the end of this series. Fantastic tale. Damn, what a weird looking creature, eh? Must have been a lot of brainstorming, you know, in order to get this character developed, hey? Yeah, we got this brand new show with a whole bunch of things that kids like, right? Kids like turtles, kids like ninjas, and kids like robots. What else can we give them? Oh, uh, well, sir, kids like brains. Brains? Huh, <laughs> zombie kids, maybe. But I like your style, Johnson. You're getting a promotion. Well, at least that's how I assume he was created. <laughs> and with Krang, man, like, he's basically a brain, right? But, you know... Is there a brain inside of that big brain? Hmm. These are the questions that keep me awake at night. Rewatching this episode did give me a whole lot of flashbacks. <laughs> like that Technodrome, man. <laughs> Impressive looking indeed, but like, holy jeez. Even as a kid watching that, man, I was like, how the hell does that thing driving around underneath New York City not collapse every building? Man, like that thing is like tunneling like three feet away from the surface. That wouldn't even hold up a semi truck, like holy jeez. And even as a kid, you know, like we all knew that the turtles would win at the end of the day. But even still, I remember thinking, you know, like that's way too easy of a win, you know? We'll defeat them this time, Krang. This time I brought two foot soldiers. Woo! You know? <laughs> But other than that, for what the cartoon is, man, it's all pretty hip. Like, Krang, you know, being a really kind of out of left field character is still pretty cool for the show. The whole ninja versus ninja stuff is like really awesome. But if you can include some, you know, alien technology, man, like, geez, that's even better. So if you haven't checked this out, you know, I suggest you do. It is pretty cool. This first season of the show is only five episodes long, so you really get everything that you need to know crammed in like lickety split. You know, it's kind of like a mini movie. But yeah, yeah, man. Other than that, you know, I got some more things about Krang and other kind of stuff going on behind the scenes over here. Yeah, yeah, man. So not only is this the first cartoon appearance of Krang, but it is also the first cartoon appearance of a mutated Rocksteady and Bebop and of the Technodrome, which sounds like an awesome name for a discotheque, eh? Huh? So let us take a closer look at these things, starting off with Krang. So, Krang first appeared in this episode. Indeed, he was created by the series writers David Wise and Patty Howith because they wanted to have some cool looking kind of alien villain who could supply Shredder with really awesome alien technology. Because are you a ninja if you don't have a laser gun from space? Well, you would be, but you'd look a lot cooler if you did have one. So for the creation of this really gnarly looking alien villain, they went to the original comic books of the Ninja Turtles from Mirage Studios. In those original comics, there were aliens known as the Utroms. Utroms? Utroms? I don't know, something like that. And speaking of these Utroms, you know, just a quick little fun fact. In the comics, they were the ones who had all this mutagen. They did lose a couple canisters, and it was those canisters that got on the Ninja Turtles and Splinter. Whereas in this cartoon series, it was actually Shredder who had the mutagen and did all that stuff. But now, back to the backstory. 
So what these Utrams looking as they do, and with Krang being inspired from them, is Krang an Utram? Well, the long answer is no. <laughs> you know, Krang and them are kind of similar looking, but you know, not exactly the same. The Utrams look more like the ghosts from Pac-Man, and you know, Krang has much less tentacles than they do, and he also has those ridges on his forehead, kind of more like a Klingon. So nay, not the same. Also, these Utroms came from outer space and crashed on Earth and kind of lived amongst the people for a bit, whereas Krang came from another dimension, you know, Dimension X. Also, further exploring the answer of no, we look no further to the Season 7 episode called Invasion of the Krangazoids. <laughs> In that episode, we learned that this brain-like form is not the original appearance of Krang and his species. No! They actually look more humanoid, but more like a reptilian humanoid, you know? Like the lizard from Spider-Man, kind of? Arms and legs and a body and a tail and stuff like that. So definitely not an Utram. So with Krang's backstory, we kind of patched together that he was this reptilian kind of a uh, humanoid person living in Dimension X. He was a warlord that lived there. He commanded an army of rock soldiers. You know, like things were looking pretty good for him. But then for some reason that the writers never actually told us, he was transformed from that reptilian humanoid appearance into this brain-like appearance. And at that point, he took his Technodrome and fled to Earth, where he met up with Shredder and kind of joined forces and like did villainous stuff together. So there you go. But speaking of the Technodrome, let's give a little talk about that kind of stuff too. So the Technodrome was built in Dimension X by Krang and his main engineer, Dracus. This behemoth of a base is like freaking amazing, man. It has a trans-dimensional portal built into it, a plethora of exterior weapons, titanium armor, 972 rooms. It has the freaking Eye of Sauron on top of it. Okay, well, more of a surveillance eye. But Sauron is always watching. So this armored mobile base for Krang and his buddies, man, like, it's incredibly amazing. It's absolute overkill, right? With this thing, it's like really hard to fathom that they couldn't take out the Ninja Turtles. Or even take over the world, you know? Or at least a portion of it. Man, maybe Krang was really a horrible leader. Jeez. So now that we have those things, let's turn to the other villains of the story. Rocksteady and Bebop. So in their human form, they did debut in the previous episode. We did still see what they looked like in this episode as well. But this was the first time that we've seen them in their mutated forms. And what's the deal with these guys? Basically, well, factually, the only reason that they were created was specifically to sell toys. <laughs> Which really isn't a bad thing, that's just the blunt honest truth, right? You have a show featuring mutated humanoid creatures, so you might as well make some more mutated humanoid creatures. Turtles and rats are cool, man, but like a freaking rhinoceros and a warthog? BAM! And of course, from this point, we will see a whole lot more mutated humanoid creatures, you know? <laughs> a whole lot more. But that's the skinny on those guys, man. <laughs> like, there's not much to it, right? So this being the first cartoon appearance of all of these things, they all made their first comic book appearance in Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Adventures number one in 1988, the series licensed to Archie Comics. And that comic was a retelling of these first few episodes before it went off on a different path telling its own stories. You know, like when Raphael was wearing that black skin suit, pretty gnarly man. So these characters and the Technodrome may have different backstories or creations or whatever in different incarnations of Ninja Turtle shows, comics, movies, whatever, you know, but for this cartoon series, this is what is what with these things, man. So at this point, you're all completely caught up. So therefore, with this, that, those, and the other things, I guess you're uh, on that diet. Also, if you guys are interested, I created my own superhero show and I have the first episode out already. The Adventures of the Density. So if you guys would like to check it out, I'll have a link above here and a link at the end of the video for you to uh, peruse there. Yeah, right on and there you go. So thanks for watching the video. I hope you liked it as much as I did making it. Also, feel free to check out the source material that I featured in this video. And if you want to leave a comment on anything you may have liked or things I might have missed,
interest in this, you know, feel free to do so. Or anything else, you know, just to say hi. That's cool too. And other than that, you know, uh, have a great day. Thanks.